Up next, the AM Kevin Show with your host, Kevin Shorey. But first, we'd like to tell you a little bit more about Kevin Shorey Ministries. 39 years ago, Kevin Shorey felt the calling to use his talents as a singer, songwriter, and evangelist to help fulfill the Great Commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Today, Kevin Shorey Ministries is continuing this mission through television, radio, social media, streaming, music, and evangelistic services. During the show, Kevin will tell you how you can help him spread the word that Jesus is the answer for this world today. Won't you consider helping us in this great cause? Thank you. Now, sit back and enjoy this edition of A.M. Kevin. You're right, Mikey. It's time for A.M. Kevin. That's right. From Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee, it's time once again for another edition of A.M. Kevin. Starring evangelist, composer, and gospel artist Kevin Shorey and the entire A.M. Kevin Club gang. And now, from the A.M. Kevin Studios, located in Stonebridge Books and Gifts in beautiful Ashland City, Tennessee, reaching coast to coast and around the world, with the message that Jesus is the answer for this world today, is your host, Kevin Shorey. Good morning and welcome to the A.M. Kevin Club. It's a great day to serve the Lord. I'm so glad that you are watching today. I am so glad that you are here. Our dear friends, the Rydells are here. Bobby Rydell will be on the program here. Uh, one that he is mentoring, Frank Chacon, is here today. All of them from New York. All right, so get ready for a great New York kind of Ashland City, Tennessee program, right? And uh, start things off, I thought, just in uh, memory of the, the great morning side where really Bobby and I, I think that's how we met, right? through Jim Baker, and so this, in honor of that, I thought I would do the title of the Valley Walker CD. It's called um, Valley Walker. <laughs> Jesus is my Valley Walker. Jesus is a Valley Walker. And is more than just a holy talker. He's more than just a good time rocker. I know Jesus is my valley walker. Jesus is your valley walker. Come on, Jesus is a valley walker. I know Jesus is a valley walker. And he's more than just a holy talker. He's much more than just a good time rocker. I know Jesus is a valley walker. Yeah, Jesus is a valley walker. Oh, yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Because when you're down in the valley and a lot of trouble's getting you down. And you look up to pray and you see mountains all around. Here's what you do. Just close your eyes and speak out loud all the word that you got in your heart. Say, Jesus is near. He's going to calm all your fears and walk you through your valley so dark. Oh, Jesus is a valley walker. Come on, Jesus is your valley walker. And he's more than just a holy talker. He's more than just a good time rocker. I know Jesus is a valley walker. Oh, Jesus is your valley walker. Thank you, Lord. It ain't no mystery what this valley walker's done for you and me. And in the bride of Christ all over the world is on a valley walking spree. He's going to walk right by your side, step by step and stride for stride. This valley walker never stops till he gets you to the mountain top. Oh, Jesus is your valley walker. Come on, Jesus is your valley walker. Say he's my valley walker. 
He's more than just a holy talker. He's more than just a good time rocker. I know Jesus is a valley walker. Oh, Jesus is your valley walker. He said he'll never, never, never leave you. Never, never, never forsake you. He's with you always. Jesus is a valley walker. He's my valley walker. Jesus is a valley walker. And he's more than just a holy talker. Come on, he's more than just a good time rocker. I know Jesus is a valley walker. Yeah, Jesus is a valley walker. One more time, say, Jesus is a valley walker. Jesus is a valley walker. And he's more than just a holy talker. He's more than just a good time rocker. I know Jesus is a valley walker. Yeah, Jesus is our valley walker, our valley, valley walker. Oh, yeah. Come on. Woo. All right, take it away, Larry. You know what you're supposed to do now, Larry. Wake up, Larry. It's time for my soapbox. I got to get on my soapbox. I got a good one today. Come on, help me out with the soapbox, Larry. Oh, Larry, give it to me. It's time now for Kevin's Soapbox. News, thoughts, and commentary from your host, Kevin Shorey. Now, here's Kevin. All right, I'm getting on my soapbox. According to HolidayInsights.com, today is Be an Angel Day. I'm always an angel. Just ask my wife. No, don't ask her. Uh, but wouldn't it be great on Be an Angel Day if everybody just turned into an angel for one day? Wouldn't it be great if there's no more cancel culture, no more wokeism, no more political strife, attacks, and lies? If it all just cease in one day, wouldn't that be awesome? A man can dream, can't I? In the meantime, it's up to you and me to be an angel today. That's my soapbox. That's it. And I'm sticking to it. Larry, wake up again. It's time for you to close out today's soapbox. I can't even see anymore. This concludes this edition of Kevin's Soapbox. Thought-provoking news thoughts, and commentary from your host, Kevin Shorey. Kevin's Soapbox is a regular feature of the AM Kevin Show. We hope that you've enjoyed it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you'll just be an angel. You know, goodness starts with you and me. Uh, as the old song used to say, it's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And speaking of prayer, we've got a lot of prayer requests, and so... We're going to pray, and uh, we have a lot of praise reports. Uh, Mrs. Frazier out there in Mississippi, she is already on the men. Praise God. Uh, we have uh, those who've been going through COVID, and uh, especially uh, my hairdresser. <laughs> this is why I'm wearing hats now. I have too much hair. I am like the African bush. It's terrible. Uh, so she had COVID, so she couldn't cut my hair, and she's got a, I, I guess, you uh, quarantined for 10 days, and so she, 10 days from the, my last appointment, which was last week. So i got to go one more week or, or through the rest of this week till she can cut my hair. But she's getting through to the other side, praise God. And so we have that to thank God for. And um, I'll give you an Uno update in just a little bit. God did heal him, man. He really did uh, really good as far as the sickness and getting through. But there's a, another update I'll give at the end of the program. I can't do it right now, but I know we can go to God in prayer and believe. And you know, Rydell's, you're on this list, and we pray for you every day. And uh, Otto healed in the name of Jesus, and, and Joe, who needs strength just to be with Otto and Bobby every day of our life. And, uh, and of course, Bobby and his ministry and all. And so we pray for you. So God, touch again the uh, 
the Rydells today. And thank you for touching Lenora and healing her. Uh, a little bit selfishly, Lord, but because I need her to cut my hair. But still, thank you for healing her and protecting her family. And uh, thank you, God. There are those who are suffering through and going through cancer right now, but I believe they're coming to the other side. My old high school friend, Victor, has been diagnosed with uh, stage four, but I know that you, no matter what the stage, I've seen you do that and more. I thank you for touching Victor, touching Rick with the uh, prostate cancer, God, and, and your healing Jim, God, and Tara, who's been diagnosed with two forms of cancer. But we know that you're the answer and you can supply all our needs. Thank you, God, that you are healing Lynn and Josh and Madeline and Steve and, and Alex's mom and being with Alex and his ministry. Those are all the Tennessee delegation. Those that are watched from California, Karen and San Jose, God, in Arizona, uh, there's uh, Sandra. Uh, and then in Texas, Sandy, that you're healing and touching them. Um, you're helping Quinn and Kathy and Georgia and their family. Leon and the McKay family there in Louisiana. The ministries that we support and, and lift up in prayer every day, Jeff and April, Bob and Valerie, of course, Alex uh, and his mom, and, and Rick and Lana, God, touch them and help them. Ginger is also in California. We pray household salvation. She put in a special prayer request for one of her daughter's uh, fathers uh, that, that he needs a healing touch. He needs Jesus. And, of course, her granddaughter, Elizabeth, touch her and bring her to you, God. For Casey in South Dakota, for Carol in Indiana, Hazel in Louisiana, the Leverage family out there in Wisconsin, God, the whole family and little Oliver. For Norman, Donnie in Missouri, of course, and Patty and her family. There are those who have lost loved ones, my Uncle Bruce and Ann. For Thomas, who's lost his wife, and Pastor Gregory in Illinois. All of them, these, this great loss that we ask that you'll bless with them and bring them peace and comfort through this trying time, we pray. Touch Nancy and touch uh, Ruth, God, and Linda in South Carolina. And I thank you and I praise you that you're with our, our nation, God. Send a revival to our nation from the White House to the church house to our house. Let there be a revival. I know that you speak every day to our leaders. May they not just hear, but may they obey your voice from our president on down, God. We pray for him every day, as you said to for those on the front line, doctors and nurses and school teachers and, and students and firefighters and policemen, truckers and farmers, God, for all those that make this nation go forward. We ask that all will be touched by your power and by your glory. Not only our political leaders, but our spiritual leaders. Be with our pastors and our churches, God. We thank you that we, Deuteronomy 28 says we can declare blessing on our location, blessing on our ability to produce today as we ask that you to bless the work of our hands, declare blessing upon the intake of our life and our family's life, protect us from any harm as we put on the whole armor of God. We declare blessing on the direction we take and over any attack against our home or us or anyone under our care. And we pray as Deuteronomy 28, 3 or 28, 7 says, though the enemy may come in in one direction, may he be so defeated that he flees in seven different directions. And we'll give you praise and glory, honor in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. You are our valley walker, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe it, those that are on Facebook, YouTube, come on, put in a big loud shout, amen. Shouting is for the older folks. Shouting is when you do it in capital letters, all right? So make sure you type in capital letters, hallelujah, amen. And uh, Larry says he loves the hat. Thank you, Larry, Lyle, Karen, all the delegation, Ginger. That's four in a row from California. The Californians get up early and watch us. You New Yorkers, it's pitiful. And uh, <laughs> it's noontime there. They get up at 9 o'clock to watch earlier. And uh, Sarah and Jimmy, God bless you. We're praying God's hand on them. Uh, didn't get an alert on Facebook. Well, there you go. We might have a... A low day here today, but oh, you got it, but a little late. I know mine came in late too. I had to keep pushing. I almost stopped the show. I didn't know. Hello, Casey. Good morning, my love. I I uh, thank God for you. And Miss Casey loves Valley Walker. Me too. Ginger says, God morning. Cliff and Joyce in St. Louis. Hello, Janie out there in Louisiana. A lot of Louisiana. We've got a growing Louisiana delegation. Come on. Awesome. If only we could do that in New York, but that state needs Jesus. But anyway, uh, he says, my mic is cutting out. Well, 
you know, my mic is my mic. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to keep get it from under my pocket. Maybe it's a better signal. And good advice on the soapbox. Thank you, Ginger. Gary out there in Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. Phyllis in Arizona. The good news. What's the good news? Dr. Fauci resigned. Huh? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got music for that. We got music for that. Well, I got to set it up. Here we go. Dr. Fauci, you know, they'll just put in another ding dong, though, until we get a new president. Uh, but Dr. Fauci has resigned, so we, we got to do that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's a long ending. Uh, Gary, yes, in Kansas City, coming through Tennessee, you said in a few weeks, we're going to be gone on the road. The show will be on the road for three weeks in September. So I hope I don't miss you, but it looks like I might be. Uh, Phyllis said, remember how we didn't like him? I know. I was reporting what Dr. Fauci said at the very beginning of everything, and then all of a sudden uh, y'all were saying he's the Antichrist or he's horrible. And, and I'm like, what? I, I had no clue, but you were right. Phyllis, let me be the first to say you were right, and I was... Uh, Cliff and Joyce, yes, Charlene, they're all clapping and applauding. And uh, happy National Tooth Fairy Day. That's right, the Tooth Fairy. Were you ever a Tooth Fairy? You should, you should let me know. Do, do, you remember, do you remember the day when you used to put... Or did you do that? You, your kid would put the, the pillow or uh, the tooth under the pillow that came out and then uh, you would put in, back in my day, it was a quarter. I'd be probably put in dollars now. I don't know. Uh, did you ever do the tooth fairy thing? Now let's go back. Back to a simpler time. A time for reminiscing. Yes, I like to reminisce and find out more about you. You were a tooth fairy. Let me know if you were ever a tooth fairy. Hi, Uncle Bruce. He's here. Yes. Uh, also, uh, this is a uh, old segment with some new music. Check this out. I'm trying to go fast because we want to get Bobby up here a lot of time because he can talk. Anyway, so, uh, but I, but you know what? It's a people get up here and say I don't want to talk too much. Hello, it's a talk. Hello, McFly. It's a talk show. Okay, just just saying. But. You now, know. this day in history. Okay, that is not the new one. Well, we got to find the new one. I, oh, did I delete it? Oh, I thought I was deleting the, the old one, and I deleted the new one, I bet. Now, this day in history. All right, well, anyway, today, August the 22nd, and I don't know what year. My source says 1902, but that's impossible. There were no cars in 1902. The Cadillac began production on this day, August 22nd. Can't, couldn't have been, I don't know. So forget it. And if you have an anniversary or birthday, we'd like to acknowledge you today along with some famous people. Oh yeah. Well, today is your special day. Yes, it and is. everyone at AM Kevin and Kevin Shorey Ministries want to wish you a very happy birthday and many more. Happy birthday. Second, you share it with Storm and Norman, General Norman Schwarzkopf, wherever he's at today. Uh, it was his birthday. And Cindy Williams from Laverne and Shirley. I love that show. She is still around, I believe, although Penny Marshall's gone. But Cindy Williams is still around. And Cindy Williams is, are you ready for this? 75 years old. Can you believe that? She was 75 years old. Anyway. So I think I covered all the bases, except for we have to take our medicine today. How do we take our medicine? You know what? Laughter does good like a medicine. So our last segment before Bobby, Bobby, you can make your way up here. <laughs> well, it's time for Kevin's Joke of the Day. <laughs> Dodge my camera, though. Don't get your head all you behind in there. There we go, because everybody usually does. So it's okay either way. You know, see, there you go. You're right in the middle of my shot. Okay, but, but you're there. I'm, Bobby's here, but here's our joke of the day. A little group of 
of kids in Sunday school were asked to write down their favorite hymn. One girl wrote down Billy. Help me. <laughs> Did you get that one? I don't know. You don't know if you got it. I don't think so. You don't? Well, a microphone yeah. helps you in talking. Yeah, Here unless you're going to talk out that end. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you're real. Now, that was a good joke. That, that was better, was better that wasn't was it? That was better than the last one you just did. You know, to write down your favorite hymn. So, a guy, Billy, her friend, Billy, a him, not a her. A him. Got, 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 yeah, got. Like Billy Brim. Did like a Billy Brim. No, because Billy Brim's a woman. A little girl wrote down Billy. Okay. A guy. See, this joke is just way too confusing, I yeah, think. How is it confusing? I don't know. I like the other one. You're a him. Your mom is a her. Write down your favorite hymn. My <laughs> yes. favorite hymn is Bobby. Okay. Do you get that now? Very good. Knee slapper. No, I guess okay. not. Not so much. But Phyllis and Ginger are laughing. No, Ginger's laughing. I don't think Phyllis is laughing. Happy anniversary, Bob and Phyllis. What? Bob and Phyllis. Bob and I are celebrating 20 years today. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Beep. I remember that. I used to do that all the time. <laughs> yes, sir. I know. Happy anniversary, Bob and Phyllis. I love you guys. I really do with all my heart and appreciate you so much. All the way in Fort Mojave. No, see, no, you moved to another town. Uh, I got Fort Mojave in my head, but they're in Arizona. And oh, Arizona. Great to, yeah, they keep things warm over there. Yo, they sure do. For sure. 117 for sure. degrees. Well, folks, all the way from Long Island, New York. Can you believe that? We have a guest all the way from New York today. I mean... We do good if we get somebody to come from Kentucky, <laughs> but uh, you came all the way from New York, and not just to see me, but I think that's part of it, right? Sure, of course. This has been a very busy three days, jam-packed oh, awesome. three days. We got to talk about that, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Bobby Rydell. Thank you. Thank you. And somebody's coming to sit next to you, so that people don't think we're just like. Yes, dumb. There, we do have another guest. We sure. do, and uh, we're talking about what your connection is to the next guest, too, Frank. Right. Shaconi. Yes, yes, he's uh, one of the Chaconi. members of my. Well, we call him Shaconi, actually. Do you? <laughs> yes, we do. We call him Frankie Shaconi. Right, Shaconi. And he's one of the members of uh, my church, Sound of Heaven, up in Deer Park, Long Island, New York. Yes. But we can talk about that later. Yes. Do you hear his accent already? Are y'all happy about New this? York? New York. Yes. Yes. No. If you when you try, it's no good. But you, yep. you, you, it just comes out. What are you holding? What are you? I'm holding these amazing and fantastic fans. Wait a minute. Well, I, let me get the last. I again. love these fantastic fans. Are they, are they here? They are the here. Bookstore? Na yes. Name the bookstore for them, so everyone Stonebridge can write here. Books and Gifts. That's right. We're right here, North Main Street, Ashland City, Tennessee. And they have all different, all different kinds. They got hilarious ones too, like being in the, uh, being as hot as a sinner or something in church. It was really good. And they do come. They come in these little things right here. Look at this one. They say Jesus. This one has the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, look at that. Let's see what this one is. Let's see what the surprise is on this. Woo, hello. There you go. There we go. Uh, be still and know. Oh, I think we That's gave that one, one out, too, Partner Gifts. These are nice, and By they the way, work thank quite you well. All for being so kind about the Partner Gifts. Uh, These are great. We're, we're for, a long, for a while, we're not going to send out any more gifts. They just want me to send them uh, my newsletter, and they said, you don't need to spend the money for the gifts. Oh, there we go. This postage has gone crazy. It's like oh. four $5 for each gift. It's crazy. Or whatever. You got Joanne Absolutely. started now. She's not going to stop bringing gifts. She's... She just, he's got another fan. Let's see. Which one is this? Wow, look they at that. They are fantastic. This one says sweating, so this one has to be for me, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to. Sweating like a sinner in church. There you oh, go. Oh, come I on. I like that one right there. I want that one. Sweating like a sinner sweating in church. Sweating like a sinner in church. There's probably many viewers of your show that can relate to this, right? Well, yes. If you want one, we'll we figure can out do that. Oh, I don't know. What do they go for here? It, it, Three ninety nine. So yeah, that's what was fantastic. it say? What to say? You know, five dollars. We'll send you one. Okay. We'll cover some postage because they're really small. Yeah, they are small, but, but they I work real well. But I can do one better than well. the fans. I'm all for the fans. <laughs> you're like me. Go but ahead. listen, no, one of my partners for my thousandth show, because yeah. now you're on one thousand and four today. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Uh, sent me this as a gift. Because I'm sweating a lot in here. Yes. It's, it's hard in the summer to I, get this place I have out. one of them, too. I wear that in church. Really? Yes. In it's church? a little bit of a different model, but the same it thing. It doesn't disrupt or whatever. No. I oh, know. It feels so great. I, there, aren't the, isn't out. technology good for certain things? Listen, technology is of the Lord. I'm glad I'm living <laughs> in this century. 
We don't die at 50 or 30. You know, it's a good century. And this is always still good old school stuff right here. Uh, no, I love that. Sweat I love like this. a sinner in church. That is good. That's Joanne. really good. I like that. Joanne finds the best gifts. This really this is, is a great. This is really good. It, it's, a, it's a great treasure. I mean, they got everything program. over here. Books and music and Speaking of music, you went everything. to music. You went to the famous Ryman Auditorium I last did. night. I did. Oh, that was awesome. I've been there to visit on the tour, but never saw a show there. What a, not a bad seat in the house. And we saw There's Matthew one. West, just amazing, just right? an awesome guy. He is. Um, the, you know, that one song he has, Truth Be Told, yes. is, uh, that went to number one. It was Grammy nominated. It was also a TV special being aired last night. So really? it was uh, being broadcast, so we'll video. To we're gonna, you're going to see it. It was great. Well, great tell night. Me, tell me, um, he said Matthew West and Friends. Who was the Friends? Who Some of the Friends. I, honestly, I did not know all the Friends, but okay. I knew a lot of the songs that they sang. So I can't yeah. tell you exactly who the Friends were. But yesterday morning, we got to speak with um, oh, Alvin friends, Love. Alvin and Cece, yeah. They yeah. have a church in town. Yes, so over there, Nashville Life. And that was a great experience. And unfortunately, Cece was not there. No. She got called in to where I live, <laughs> up in Times Square. So she was up there at Times Square Church. So you traded places. We traded places for the day, but we spoke to, to you know her, her husband, Alvin. And uh, very exciting, because we're going to see her in October. She's on tour with oh, the wonderful. Believe For It tour. And uh, we'll be backstage with her that night. So now very exciting. Before we get anything serious, I want to do yeah. a little, little commercial you can help me with. But sure. I was going to ask you about your church. So if you're in the Long Island area and they want to visit a good on-fire Non-denominational, apostolic, we believe, you Shut know, up. so many different things, yes. So many different things. Yes, you know, so just come, come on like in. That. Well, there's we, so, we but we can't, in I so can't give you things. our statement of belief right now. Just go to our website. That's www.soh.church. You Sound can check everything like out that. there. Sound of Heaven, also on Facebook and Instagram. Go check it out. When I'm we putting do in my water the hemp extract, which is, helps me with... Pain, inflammation, great and all. Stuff. No, it is great, great, great stuff. Mm -hmm. There's the liquid, there's the pills, and there's the lotion. You slather that on your back or wherever. The it really is good. I don't know if y'all believe me yet, but it really does help a lot. And so those are available. You go to our website. You see the website address up right now, kevinchoy.com. You find the link for silver. Here's some liquid silver. And uh, so we've got the liquid silver. We've got the silver lozenges, silver gel. We don't have it, but up to me to help. Mr. Frank Davis is helping us out. And uh, so go on our website and go up to Optavita Health. And you'll find that. Another site and the link that's on our site is MA Exclusives. It will take you to shop.com when you punch in Auto Works or Fuel Enhancer. This is great for traveling. You squirt an ounce of this after you fill up your tank and it stretches the gas, mm. cleans your gas tank. It is environmentally safe. And uh, this is working. I am putting less gas in my car already, and I've still got two ounces left to go in this first bottle. <laughs> and we know with gas prices today, anything you can save. Right, they're down. <laughs> you know, what another crazy, but it's Angel Day, so I'm not going to be negative, but how crazy it is to take credit for gas going down when they're the reason it went up. I don't know. <laughs> Has this world totally lost their minds? Well, I know last year at this time, Kevin, we were paying under $2 in New York. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm using my AM Kevin Club pen. I got to get you, and everybody monthly, this is the last time a monthly gift is going out, but I had made the AM Kevin Club backpacks. And so these are these little uh, purple with the logo on it, and uh, there's the, I'm going to have to give you guys a backpack. Cool. You can put some, some more luggage and things you buy at Stonebridge Books and Gifts today in your backpack. There you go. You're one of the fans. So that most everybody's gotten them by now. You know, you can fit all your fans and everything in there. I love these fans. I really do love these fans. Well, I love you. Well, you've been a friend for a long time. I'd say at least, I know 10, 15. At least 10. Probably, yeah, probably 13. Oh. Four, maybe fit more than that. I, I started 15. Jim Baker 2005. Okay. Then it had so to be around that time because I, I went there first at Studio City Cafe. That was 17 years ago. Oh, wow. So that's a long time. I know. Yeah. You were at Studio City Cafe. I was at Studio City Cafe. I was actually there that infamous day. Which which was Where the you dressed up <laughs> in, so in the hula outfit. Oh, no, you did not. I was there that day, yes. The Alomas or something, there was their name, Alohas, I, I forget. But and they, <laughs> it was Hawaii Day, and, and Mondo was, yes. said, I thought he was kidding. Mondo <laughs> says, I think Jim would love it if you'd put on a hula skirt. <laughs> 
And you it know was me. It was great. It was great. I'll be Santa, the, yeah, yeah. the bunny rabbit, whatever. Right, right. And uh, I did. And I learned the hula with Mrs. Alani. Alani. I think was okay. Yeah, yeah. One of the, we were there for like 10 days. And I remember one of the other guests um, that really had a huge impact on my life, our, our ministry, uh, was the, the guys from True, True Faced. Remember that oh, book, True Faced? Of course. I love Ooh, those guys. Great, great book. I forgot his name off the top of my head. I know, but you know, his last book was good, too. It was, it was yeah. about the antidote or something like that. It was about Tremendous. the blood of Jesus. So good. No, I know. So good. True Faced. Mm -hmm. Y'all should look that up for yeah. sure. If I was giving out gifts, I, I'd buy some more of those. Yeah, those, those are like change your life reading is that book. Yes. So, but you were going to like Heritage USA. Yes. Back before I Gosh. was even there as a Heritage USA singer. I was definitely under 10 when we yes. started. What year do you think was your first trip over to the water park and all that? Oh, to the water park. Uh, well, it was well, before the water park, probably. Yeah, this was, this was all before the water park. It was just Whoa. the chalets at the time. There was no Grand Hotel made. There was nothing like that. We were staying in chalets. Uh, it had to have been 1982, maybe. So it was late 70s. 1982, oh, maybe. 82 yeah, because that would, that would be seven. So maybe 82, 83 in that area. And then I went. Go ahead. Yeah, I went there in 83. Okay. So Was the Grand built when you were there? No. Okay, so. It was built the year after I left, so 84, I think. Okay. We went back with the Lundstroms because I left okay. to join the Lundstroms. Okay. And uh, Joanne, come and talk because he doesn't know the years. Do you remember the years? Do you want to? You're the only Joe in here. I said Joanne, didn't I? Yeah. But it was around those years, right? You want to say hi? At least get up here and say <laughs> wave, and then you can go sit down. You got to see Come on Bobby's up. mama. She's she's very stage fright. Person. Yeah, well, it's just us. Yeah. It's a, don't touch the camera. <laughs> hi. I think it was about eight, really, when we first got there. I wanted them to see a face. Look at the middle camera. A face to go with your name because you pop on more than he does online. And people oh see, now you know who Joe Rydell is. That's Joe. Hi. Yeah, she's done. <laughs> she's done. Put a fork in there. She's done. <laughs> but what was your favorite part of Heritage USA? Oh, what man. do you think? Because you went there, then you go in every year? Every year. That point? Two, yeah. two to three times a year, actually. Um, if, yeah, it was my sister and I, if we had a choice every year where to go, it's either you know, Disney World or Heritage USA. We always picked Heritage USA, so that tells you the impact it had on the child. I would too. And that, again, that was even before the water park, you know, and all yeah. the things that they had there. But there was, yeah, um, it was just great. You know, uh, for the it, concerts and the guests. They, the amphitheater was around. I mean, it was just everything oh, about yeah. it was so cool. The recreation center as children, the roller skating that we did. We saw Mylon there, and some other great bands that came through. She came a lot, yeah, Mylon. You know, it was really good stuff. Broken heart. But like some of the other great aspects of that place was there was like a freedom. Like my mom and my dad, you know, they 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 worry a lot more. So my mom, you know, the Italian worrier. Of course. But as a child, I was able to get on the tram by myself, let them take me all over the property. What was it? Yeah, Three thousand acres safe. or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. Four thousand? I don't remember. Oh, it was a lot. But she <laughs> felt comfortable letting me do that, and it was just. Uh, if I remember, I was three thousand square mile, or not miles, but. It was something square, like something square mile. Well, listen, the third most popular vacation destination in the country, was right? Great. That was amazing. So did you know God was working with you at a young age, that you were going to be used like you are now in, in ministry, not only in your church, but tell us how you got into the Wrestling Association <laughs> of the world. Well, I was, I was always a, a wrestling fan. Really? Um, I, I was, I too, as a kid. Yeah. Then I grew up. But anyway, uh, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, what? I learned something new every day. I was a, <laughs> no, I love I, my, my My brothers and I would go to see, uh, there was a guy named Ernie Ladd. Oh, Ernie Ladd, sure. Andre the Giant. Uh -huh. um, my name is the, oh, Dusty Rhodes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Dusty Rhodes, baby. Yeah, I bet yeah. you Rhodes, baby. And yeah. then we, used to, we did a joke from that. This could have been the joke of the day. I should oh, have okay. thought of this. There we go. Do you know why Jesus was a wrestler? No, why? Because he walked on Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. That was good. I like that we'll one. See you that was good. God bless you. That was really good. Ernie Ladd, actually, um, yeah. Christian man, and I was one of the ones who did his uh, wrestling figure deal. I, I, he had a nice, nice, nice wrestling figure. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get involved? Who was the first, and what happened? To um, gosh, just being a fan. My grandparents taking me to the you know the arenas up there, the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. Uh, just mesmerized by the whole thing. Got 
deeply involved with um, a, a promoter friend of mine who used me for different events, kind of le led to other things, other doors opening, and uh, it's a long story trying to make very short. Just went through many, many different doors, and it just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. I had a newsletter out. Yeah, well, names became an agent. Names we all named. Sure. You, uh, my gosh, Greg the Hammer Valentine, Bruce the Barber Beefcake. These are all Hall of Famers, by the way. Yeah, a lot of people uh, know these people. Jimmy Hart, Shawn Michaels, uh, Sting, who I still work with today. Um, George the Animal That's Steel, he's no longer there. That's a good song. Um, There's just so many of them. I mean, my gosh, most of them from the 80s and 90s, and, and then some today as well. And most of them, if not all of them, are born again believers. Well, not Christians. not all of them, not okay. all of them, but, yeah, but th there was a, a contingency are, that so were. So you put some of them in churches to do. Yeah, yes, we, we like Sting, for example, did one of our shows, uh, the Million Dollar Man, of course, Teddy DiBiase did a lot of yeah, shows. He's and, a famous one. Uh, absolutely, uh, Shawn Michaels did a show. We d we did a show actually in New York. Uh, Three thousand people showed up. Shawn Michaels was on there, who gave his life to Christ and. Uh, the Million Dollar Man, we even had Kane there. I mean, just crazy stuff. Wrestling, put it this way, wrestling is humorous. Yes. But the Bible also says God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. True that. And there's nothing more foolish than That's professional wrestling. Or my show, either one. <laughs> yes, I know. So, but yeah, I mean, we were on ESPN Magazine. We were the number one rated show on TBN when we did a TBN special. Um, oh, I'm sure. Uh, uh, you know, wrestling, of course, magazines everywhere, radio, television. As a matter of fact, the first show we filmed and distributed was at Jensen Franklin's church. Oh, and I he got when behind he us. Yeah. He'd set up a whole ring in the middle of his yep, church, right? Yep. And so did Tommy Barnett, Pastor Tommy. Of course he did. You know, Phoenix First Assembly, we, they would have something called Pastor School, and we'd always set something up there to show the pastors that this is something you can do in your church. You can take this and use it as an evangelism tool. That is awesome. So it, it was really crazy. So I've seen both sides of the, the wrestling world, and, uh, you know, it's good to be on the other side sometimes. Yeah, for sure, for <laughs> yeah. sure. And yeah. uh, and you've booked artists and stuff as well at Gospel. Sure. So um, and, and, you you know, you're just a Over a the years, yeah. Carmen, I did some Carmen. Carmen, and, and you are a great singer, which not means today. you are going to get thrashed with noodles tonight. <laughs> Uh, for not singing on our program. I just don't, ha I haven't vocally warmed up in months. I'm sorry. It's just been one of those things, you know. Well, Listen, we'll last, last year I was here huh? in July. L last year I was here in yeah. July. And Tim Miner was one of the guys I work with. And Bring him. You two should come on together. He, that would be hilarious. Well, he does that song, Forgive Me. Remember yeah. Forgive Me? Of course. And I said, Tim, I, I absolutely have to hear you sing Forgive Me. And I have to sing it with you. <laughs> So right there in his dining room, we're singing Forgive Me. It was like <laughs> I had to list. do that. Yeah. Yeah, it all was. It was a bucket list. Because that song was actually one of the, f I call it a, a life song. I have like three life songs. And that's one of them. And it, it just, the, the lyrics, everything is like perfect for me. That's something I want at a, a big Bobby Rydell, This Is Your Life event one day. I want that song sung. Amen. It's so good. Um, the other one is, is called In This Life which is actually by Gladys Knight. Wow. Amazing in this life. And it's such a great emotional, like you feel like, you know, how we sense the anointing on songs. Like yeah. this has something there. Yeah. And come to find out, guess who produced that? Tim Miner? Tim Miner. There you go, of course. <laughs> but I didn't know that. So all these years, 20 years, I'm singing that song. I had no idea that was, uh, Tim produced that album. Yes. So just amazing and stuff. And you're not going to sing a line of anything. I, I mean, I, 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 I don't think I can. I really don't. Well, that's I fine. I'm not going to make you, but I mean, yeah. I just wish you would come back next time. Next time. When, when I'm warmed up. Time. I'm really yes. not warmed up. For sure. That's the only thing. Now, I don't think this is the first uh, young man you've uh, mentored no. before. because, Like Rodrigo, he was kind of one of well, well, Rodrigo and I were good friends. Yeah, we've helped each other out, actually. Yes. But Johnny Ova, yeah. you, you remember Johnny, he's actually the head of the church. Yeah. You know, and... Um, it went from the world of wrestling, right? From the world of wrestling, led him to the Lord. And uh, we traveled literally all over the place from... Like, we did a show in Jamaica. 56,000 people were there. Whoa. 56,000. And 20 something thousand got saved that day. <laughs> it was like crazy. It was in Dump Up Beach. It was that, that was like, you could say, 
my WrestleMania. That was like the most I've ever been around. And I've done other WrestleManias, but not as a performer. I was there doing different things. And yeah. But like that was truly wow. That was a wow That's moment. A wow. That was really a wow moment. That's and awesome. uh, yeah, John is just doing great. He's now has pastors. Now pastors, five children, and his Woof. wife Rachel. And I want to figure I, that out. Does he know what causes <laughs> that? <Is he? laughs> I think he does. Yes. But his children are absolutely the best. And I I love them all. Zoe and LJ, I gotta say them now. So it's Zoe, LJ, Massimo, Eden. Look at your camera and say hi. And to them all. Lucy. I love you guys so much. And of course, everybody at the Kingdom Kids, which is the Sunday school program. Uh, my gosh, I can't name all of them, but of course, you know, all of Jason and Chrissy's. Jason and Chrissy are evangelists of the church. There's so many great kids. So I love you guys so much and I miss you. <laughs> yes, the leverages say hi to you guys. Remember Dave and Barb? Absolutely, and I do. Hi, guys. Little Robin and Bobby, you're yeah, not little yeah. anymore. No, no, but, but I do. But speaking of little, here's one. No, I'm kidding. That is a bad <laughs> setup. But this is uh, one that you're many. Come on up here, uh, uh, Frank, if you can, Mr. Chacon. And uh, here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't have the applause ready for you, but here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, here. from the world of wrestling. No, I'm kidding. We're going to find out how you met him and sure. how we get. Uh, uh, but it's, it's Frank Chacon. <laughs> Now you can talk. Yeah, I didn't hear the Shikoni part. I didn't do Shikoni because it's Shikoni, <laughs> no. right? It's Shikoni, it's Shikoni, yeah. Now we'll call you Shikoni, but the original, <laughs> you know, yeah. I had to do the... What kind of nationality is that? Well, Italian? I mean, well, I'm a Salvadorian. Oh, Salvadorian. I'm a Salvadorian, oh, yeah. Okay. But I, right. that last name, I don't think it's... I think it's any Latino name, basically. It's any Latino. Yeah, basically. So it's like, a yeah. Latino. <laughs> that is so funny because just today, somebody was telling me, oh, yes, um... Caleb, you know Caleb and Harmony. Of course. Yes, yeah. they said to say hi. Oh, we love Caleb for and sure. Harmony. And yeah. Uh, yeah, Caleb was just telling me he yeah. says I went out to my without my Hispanic friends to the, last yeah. night. And I said, what do you mean Hispanic? What national? Who? What, why are you saying? Anyway. Yeah. So then yeah. you say I'm a Latino. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a basic Latino, basically. <laughs> well, Frank, uh, I'm so glad that you're here. How did you guys meet? Go ahead. So I mean, um, just basically, I attended his church. You know. Um, so I was going through a lot at one point, you know, and I was I was raised um Catholic before. Nothing wrong with that, but um, you know, I just the thing is I don't know. I just I was such in a, in a such a vulnerable state of mind that you know someone invited me to it, and you know, and it kind of like you know I kind of said yes when if I wasn't in a vulnerable state before I would have I would probably said no. So uh, I went there, and then you know, and I felt something so special in that in that room. I got prayed for, and then Man. tears coming by, and then you know. Oh. And then, yeah, and then later on, I think like a, a month later or something like that, me and him start getting very close, a month or two later, something like that. Yeah, we have a very strong mentorship program. Yeah. So when someone comes into the church that's newly saved, yeah. you want to plug them in and get them around that's people. Because right. Jesus said make disciples, not that's right. converts. That's right. Of course. So, of course. Yeah. So, you know, the, the whole thing about being an apostolic church is we like to raise people up in their giftings and oh, then sending so them out. You're giving me goosebumps. That's what it's all about. Right? No, that is great. And your yeah. mama says hello to you, Francisco. Oh, really? <laughs> What's uh, up? Is your mom Kendi? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Kendi Cartagena. Cartagena. I'm very proud of my son, Francisco. <laughs> Not Francisco. Francisco. <laughs> I, I, that's, that, I hate that name, Francisco. <laughs> I, like, that's my full name. I hate it. I cannot stand it. I, I'm sure. <laughs> but it's a cool name. I mean, you know, I'm just Kevin. Kevin. You're Francisco Chacon. I think, I think oh Frank gosh, is just like easy. Frank is like Frank. No, I know. Frank's cool. Yeah. And Bob, she <laughs> says hi to Bobby, too. Of course. And Ginger, one of our partners out in California, her husband is Salvadorian. Oh, wow. And Nelson okay. is Salvadorian. Yeah. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty cool. And it's cool that, you know, uh, so how long have you been with the Lord now then? So how long ago was that? When you this, I remember the date, too. January 28th. Uh, it's going to be six years. Six years. So I'm awesome. like five and a half years. Somewhat, somewhat Where do you think the Lord is leading you then? And what do you think of the, your church and the mentorship and all that? So, uh, well, I'm called, to, I'm called to be an evangelist. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I love evangelists. Yeah. So my, my, the thing is, my heart is towards, like, the nations, basically. I, you know, I don't know. After, like, I'm the type, when I started, like, you know, in my, in my walk of God, when I first started walking with God and everything, I started, like, researching a lot of religions. Yeah. I started researching the Muslim religion, the in Hindu religion, um, the what do you call it, the Sikh religion. I, I studied a, a, like a lot of them, and, and you know, it's like, you know, I just looked at all these things, that, like the differences that there are. You know how the people say, you know, it's like, um, 
that all religions lead to the same God. Well, listen, a lot of them have like the like you know kind of like same beliefs. You know, do good and you you'll be blessed or whatever. But when you get to the core of it, they're completely different. Yeah. That, and that's the thing about it. It's, like, well, it's always works related. You have to do this. Yeah, so if of you're course. good, if you do that, you can come back as a cow or something. Of you course. Know, I mean, right. all the different things. But Jesus paid it all for us. Of and course. Not that, I'm trying, not that we take advantage of that, but we do. We accept mm-hmm. his salvation and know he's real because all the other religious leaders died. He's alive. No, of course. And when you look at like the evidence behind um, like all these religions, it's like it's like – Keep in mind, you know, this. You, if anyone knows of how, who Lee Strobel is, yeah. sure. so he obviously the wrote case for, the, the case yeah. for Christ and all that stuff. So the things with that, it's like, you know, when you look at, like, the, the religions of, um, let's say, Mu- of Islam, okay? Muhammad said that um, that Jesus is, isn't the Son of God, and he, he didn't die on the cross. Meanwhile, we say that, 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 that he is the Son of God. So when people say they all lead to the same God, you, you have to, like, look at the fact. Like, uh, really? we say that Jesus is the Son of God. Islam doesn't. Hindus believe in 300 million deities. We yeah. say we believe that's only one God. Amen. So it's like, which one is it? You gotta you gotta study the evidence behind all of them and then come to yeah. the conclusion which one is real. Yeah. Well, it's Amen. really good. If you haven't read, you ought to. Evidence demands a verdict by John McDowell. Oh yeah. McDowell. Of that's course. Yeah. Good. Are you gonna another. rap too? Are you gonna? Oh, it sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm ready for. <laughs> sorry, I just break it out. Come on. <laughs> break sorry. It out. <laughs> yo yo. Yo. Yeah, but. Uh, Oh my goodness, that is so true, man. And you are going to be an evangelist because that's an evangelist. You can feel it right away. Except <laughs> Jesus, there's no other way. It really isn't. I mean, if you really study it, yeah. so, so that, true. Yeah, no. With evangelism, you know, some people uh, may want like a logical type of answer, and then there's other people that may want like a more like you know emotional kind of answer. Maybe just they, they need to feel something, or maybe or they need to like just see something. You have to you, when you talk to someone, you have to see where they're coming from. If yeah. you if you if they need more a logical answer like an evidence type of thing, do that. Yeah, if there. not, some people yeah. don't want to hear that. Depends. Yeah. No. If you let the person. But it's all that Jesus is the. We end it, our show by saying that every day. But it's not just the cliche or it's the truth. Jesus is the answer. It is for Amen. everybody in every society in every way, shape, or form, and uh, there's just no other above him. It, it is just Jesus. And, and I think that's why it's important to get out of the box. Uh, you know the four walls of the church so much that's why the oh, wrestling yeah. was so good yeah because like someone like him you know won't be reached if we're just staying within the four walls of the church no, so you know one person gets reached now he has that passion desire to go forward and do more so that i mean that's Praise what it is God. so that's that's why accountability david and jonathan right that's a good example yeah, david no, and jonathan. a great example so yeah yeah and no. the main goal too for me too is i want to reach out, out a lot of young people because they're our future Amen. You know, it's like when, like, no offense, when the old generation dies out, guess what? The new generation comes in. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like, so it's like, um, basically, it's like you have to like, like, like the Bible says, you gotta like teach your cu- uh, kids at a young age. That way, they won't fall away. So, yeah. um, th- that's the thing about that. So, you know, a lot of the times in this age, w- we have social media, right? So, social media, the things with that, it's like, um, a lot of people tend to like look at what's cool on social media and what they see, and, and they tend to follow that. They t- they tend to base, compare their life based on what what's in a little box. See, and I want to learn. I want to tell them that Jesus, you know, it's like there's so much more to that th- to Jesus than just comparing yourself in a little box. There's so much more to that. You don't have to do that. See? I know. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. I might need some of your recommendations to sure. youthen up this show a little bit. <laughs> we want to reach them, but. Uh, whether I do or not, I feel like we're in good hands for the next generation with yeah. Francisco Chacon. <laughs> <laughs> like if you say it like that, I do like it now. <laughs> yeah, See? You, you know, something Rolls. that you may really appreciate, tell them what your dream is for, for ministry a little bit, what you would like to do. So, you know, he's not going to give everything away. But no, no, I'll tell you a little bit. So the thing with that is like, I don't know. I was driving one day, and I felt God was like, I'm going to, I felt God say to me, I'm going to use you to make Christianity cool, like seem cool. Like, it's like, sometimes, you know, the way we see Christianity in these days, it's like, you know, we see it's like, oh, rules, or like, oh, church, you know, we just got to sit there and, and, and just like follow these rules right. and all that stuff. See, Christianity is much more than that. It totally. It is. Totally. And it's like, you know, I want, I, I want to like show people that it's like, you know, it's not it's not about rules that you're following. It's just about having a relationship with that, God. That's kind of what we want to do in this show. We call know. it entertainment with a message. Of course. I, we should have the most fun. Absolutely. I mean, we have rappers, yeah. magicians, comedians, uh, everything from country to rap. I mean, yeah. we, 
because it's all in the kingdom. Of yeah. course, yeah. Christianity shouldn't look like 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 you're all like stuck in a rock but un- like underneath the a cave. Yeah. It's like it's not like, it's like right. you're on the front of the Quaker Oats box. You yeah, know? it's like <laughs> it, it, like it's not yeah. all about rules. It's much more yeah. than that. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. It's good. You know? The next generation's in safe hands. Yeah. And I kind of wanted to talk about, because we're coming, I mean, you're not going to believe this. I mean, there's eight minutes left in the show. Right? Okay. So oh, we've already wow. got almost an hour. But, um, you know, sometimes we go through the tough times. You know, you found out in six years, you know, it's not all gravy and, uh, you know. Of course. Yeah, it's all right. But no matter what we face, it, the Lord is always with us. And I was reading, and uh, I won't take time to open the word, but trust me, it's in the word. Luke 1940, where Jesus uh, rode through the gates of Jerusalem and they're waving the palm branches right. and the, the religious Quaker Oats people said, <laughs> oh, you shouldn't be going crazy and shouting and praising. And, and uh, Jesus stopped <laughs> and says, but if you don't praise me, then the very rocks will cry out. Yeah. Right. That's Luke 1940. And uh, I found out through, of course, you've never been through any tough times. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not true. One time you called me after yes. a program that really blessed you and helped you. Oh, my gosh. Through a tough time. And, yeah. and but if we don't praise him, you know, if we just praise him in the good times or when the spirit moves us, mm-hmm. Lowell Lundstrom used to have a phrase. He says that's praising backwards. Mm-hmm. You know, we only praise him in the good and or when the spirit tells us, then we praise. Uh, but it's backwards. It may, it's no better than the rocks. Mm-hmm. Waiting mm-hmm. for the rocks or waiting for God. to. Anyone can do that, but it's when times are tough. Right. When you don't feel like praising him, that, that's when you're the wise, mature Christian because you of understand course. that... It's backwards if you wait for God to move you and then you do something. It's, it's you praise first, and then the Spirit comes upon you and strengthens Praise Him through you. the storm so I can lift my hands. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Right. He fills you. He strains you. He lifts your hands. Mm-hmm. It's not the other way around. It's praising backwards when you wait for God to pull your strings because you're not a puppet, right. so He's mm-hmm. not going to pull you. are not a robot. Right. He doesn't program you. And your feelings cannot be the excuse from you praising. Because he's the one who created you to praise whether you're feeling it or not. Galatians tells us in everything, in all give him thanks. From the depths of our sadness and our sorrow, and I've had to practice this just last night and today. Yeah. But in the depths of your sadness, the Lord will lift you up. And he will help you. So don't let the rocks praise him first. That's praise him backwards. Praise him now. Get through the breakthrough. Right. Take it, Francisco Chacon. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> what do you think? Of course, of course. And let me tell you something. Get ready for your breakthrough when you're praising, of right? Of course. And let me tell you something. So this is something that God uh, revealed to me probably a few months ago. Come on. And it's something that, he, this is what he told me. Um, he said, I may fail your, may fail your expectations, but I'm not going to fail you. Oh, come That's on. Say that line. again. Come on. Okay. I may fail your expectations, but I'm not going to fail you. See, a lot of the times we expect certain things at, at a certain timing from God. But let me tell you something. When you do that, you're, you're hindering your, your walk with God because God's not going to do it your way. It's not, it's not going to happen. He's going to do it right. his way. That's right. And the things with that, it's like, um, see, a lot of times we expect, you know, I mean, for example, we expect to be married at a certain age. We expect to, to have this job where we're going to have, like, you're a lot of money. You're definitely preaching to the choir on this side. <laughs> <laughs> or expect to, you know, like, to have certain things at a certain time and a certain fra- uh, time frame. It's like, it's not going to happen that way. I mean, it, it, I don't know. God can do anything, of course. of course. But the thing is with God, it's like, you know, from what I've learned in my six years, which is not, you know, a lot, you know, compa- compared to a lot of people, but it, it don't put, you're putting God in a small little box when you, yeah. when you, when you, when you, when you expect him to work a certain way. It, it's just not going to yeah. happen. You're you just know. called to love him and praise him. Of course. And know that he's got the best answer and the best timing. Of course. And the, like, for example, Paul, like he was in prison. He wasn't, he, he expected God to move in his life. He, expect, he, he didn't know what to expect, but he trusted God. Yeah. And God, because of that, he was more free than the people that were actually free. Come on, that's right. Then he was in yeah. prison, but his mind was like completely free. Yeah. See, and that's the thing. Like, he was still happy. He still trusted God, no matter what, no matter what happened. Yeah. No matter if he that's was going to die tomorrow or he was going to die in a month, he still was happy because he trusted God. That's it. That's the truth, isn't yeah, it? About no, it me no it definitely is. And. You know, you mentioned that particular episode um, that you did. That was back at Morningside. One of the very had first show. shows. Yeah, it was, it was really an amazing show. And God, this is why God uses Christian television, exactly what you're doing and so many others are doing. Um, it was, I was in a bad place, not really good at all. Uh, I went into the kitchen with my mom. My mom said, why don't we just pray? I said, okay, we're going to pray. We're right near the kitchen stove. I'll never forget it. 
that all I want to do is sit down and watch Kevin's show. Then I want to try to go to bed. Wow. And this, we turned it on. It was a hot topic. It was a really hot topic. And, um, is and that Rick Panette was on that day? Was that Rick? Or somebody had been on that was going to kill themselves. I, I, I don't remember the yeah. th who, who was, was the guest. Right. But I remember the topic. And I'm like, shut it off. I don't want to watch the shut it off. Because I thought the topic was going to make it worse for yeah. me. Because of what I was going through. Yeah. And she said, no, maybe this is God, what God wants you to do is watch the show. Come on. And it was a half an hour show. And it was perfect. And it just shifted everything around. I think it was midnight that I called you or texted you. Yeah. And just said how that incredible it was. So and, much. and how the timing of it was. So it was just, so much just awesome. I love you. So. And uh, for me, right now, I just wanted to announce this. I, I don't have time to really do the song, but we ended that show with Keep Holding On. Mm -hmm. He'll be right there beside you. Mm -hmm. and, and that song alone has, there's so many testimonies just with that song. Not that I, because I sang it and I wrote it. It's because it's just the anointing of the Lord breaks mm -hmm. every yoke of bondage. If you're going through depression, sadness, discouragement, I, I've really been discouraged. Uh, you all know about um, Uno being sick and Uno got past his sickness, and I showed Jim bouncing around, uh, running. And uh, uh, on Saturday, I was walking him, and uh, I saw him run next door, and he usually comes right back. He didn't come back. We waited. He didn't come back. We went over. Within 30 minutes, we were then scouring the area. He was gone. And since Saturday, our little Uno that we've been, uh, I try to go straight through this, uh, our little Uno that just got recovered from all of his stomach ailment, had disappeared since Saturday, and we don't know where he is. We, I mean, it looks like good news. We don't see uh, any buzzards circling, which I know that sounds horrible, but in the country, that's the sign of some dead animal. And so I still think he's somebody got him or something and, and is keeping him, and we're, we're hoping. So pray with us. And that's just, it sounds, uh, maybe it sounds mundane and dumb to you of that, that we love our little doggy so much, and we've been talking about him all week, that he was sick, and now... Now he's been gone since Saturday, and here it's Monday, so uh, please pray. But through that, I just, God reminds me just to praise him and trust him yeah. that he's got it. And so we've all had those tough times. Th there's that expression that says, you know, when God closes one door, another one opens. I always modify that and say when God closes one door, you're in the hallway. And in the <laughs> hallway is where it's scary. Preach so right that. now you That's are in the good. hallway, Kevin. You're in the hallway. Yeah, but you're I waiting am. for that Amen. second door to Always. open. Always. Yeah, and I know you all will pray and trust God. But let's pray for them. Whoever feels led, I want you just to reach out and, and pray for people and, and put in there that somebody will find Christ, maybe through this program. And maybe they're going through a struggle. You know, maybe because they're still single. Maybe because they, they've been sick so long. Maybe their family's in a mess. Maybe they're so broke they can't even pay attention. You know, mm -hmm. that whole stupid phrase. What camera? Uh, camera one. You're, the, you're number one. Yeah. There you go. But let's pray before we go. All right. So, Lord Father God, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that even in the midst of our storms, even in the midst of our trials, you're still there, Father. And I thank you that that you will supply our needs according to your riches and your glories, Father. And we pray right now that any sickness, anything that anything that it tries to come against our life, Father, that you are there in the midst and you are there even taking us through the storm and taking, in, taking us out of it. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I thank you right now that, that in the name of Jesus that you are all powerful, Father. That there's nothing that we can't overcome with, with you, Father. And we thank you that, that you're there in the midst and we thank you that, that you're powerful, you're wonderful, and then we, we thank you, God, that, that we, we don't have to like, um, we don't have to base our identity on something else other than you, Father. That it's only you, Father. And today I pray for people who, th for the person who doesn't know Christ. Come on. For the person that yes, that Lord. looks that looks at themselves and just Jesus. hates what they see. In, they see, they see, Father. And I, I pray for that person right now who's suicidal right now, Father. Jesus. That you, that you that you touch their hand. That you touch them right now, Father. That they know that it's you, Father. And that they they and that they know that they, that you love them, Father. That if no one else does, that you do, Father. Father. And so we thank you, God. See, yes, see, something about that. See, David was overlooked by his own dad, by his own father, when, Saul, when um, Samuel came in. And, and so, so what happened was, like, you know, out of all the people, God chose him, the one that was overlooked. See, so if you feel like you're, over, if you've been feel like you're overlooked, on. if you feel like you've been just, like, bullied, if you feel like you've been, like, just, like, 
just in a whole complete mess. I'm, I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to you right now that God will show off with your life. Yes. Good. See, God, God wants, wants a relationship with you. God wants something special with you, and he wants to show up with your life. So right now, I pray for that person right, on, right now in the name of Jesus, that you touch them, that you, that you just do a wonderful work in them, Father. Awesome. And I thank you for their life, and I thank you for what they're going to become. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Powerful, powerful. Receive the Lord today. Receive him today because, as I say, every program, uh, that Jesus is the answer for this world well, today. today. we got a full week this week. Dan uh, Nixon will be with us. Hunter Lott, great young up-and-coming country singer. Pastor with a s- severe disability, but he's never let it hold him That's back it. for the first time. Pastor Amen. Jeremy Empey, he'll be right here in the studio live. It's a full week, and thank you. Ginger says, oh, thank you for having Bobby, and she said, Francisco Chacon. <laughs> so, so many of your viewers I know, so it's so nice to you see gotta them. you got to say the Francisco. Francisco Chacon. Francisco. I love it. Uh, well, thank you for having us, Kevin. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. He put up it. the uh, Sound of Heaven website. It looks like soh.church. soh.church. Yep. We're live every Sunday. Ooh. Awesome. So uh, watch it. 1030 a.m. Yep. And Eastern we also have Central. E- Eastern Time. All right, Eastern Time. Central. Deer Park, New York. You can also check out the Facebook page, Sound of Heaven, and the Instagram as well. All Sound right. of Heaven. Sit Thank tight. You. We're going to say goodbye now. We'll see you tomorrow right here on the AM Kevin Club. Jesus is the answer for this world today. Take so long, everybody. Out. Thank you. Take care, guys. This brings to a close another edition of AM Kevin. We're glad you were able to join us. The A.M. Kevin Show is presented Monday through Friday featuring evangelist, composer, and gospel artist Kevin Shorey and the entire A.M. Kevin Club gang. If you'd like to contact us, you can call us at 844-47-KEVIN. That number once again is 844-475-3846. Or you can write us at Kevin Shorey Ministries, P.O. Box 222 Pleasant View, Tennessee, 37146. Our email address is kshorymen at aol.com. And you can also visit us at our website, kevinshorey.com. Join us again next time when we present another edition of AM Kevin. And remember, Jesus is the answer for this world today. AM Kevin is a part of the outreach ministry of Kevin Shorey Ministries, Inc., All rights reserved.